Welcome to the RSP Film Room. I'm Matt Waldman with Rookie Scouting Portfolio. Let's take a look at Brock Purdy, the quarterback for Iowa State. This is a fun play because you're going to see a dig route that he's patient about waiting for it to come open. And he's going to feel a little pressure off the right side. He gives a couple little steps towards his left, waits patiently, fires that ball with great placement over the linebacker, turns into a nice long gain here. Let's take a look at it from the red zone view before we look at it again from this broadcast view. But here he is from the red zone view, and there's edge pressure on each side. You can see that at least they're showing that potential for edge pressure here. And he motions across, and he gets a chance to read a little bit what the defense is going to be doing underneath here. So he drops back, feels that edge pressure a little bit, slides over just a couple steps to his left, and then waits to the last moment here to where he, you know, the receiver's breaking across the middle and gets that ball over the linebacker here, just over the head of number 31, in stride to number 17 for a long play all the way to inside the five yard line. Now let's take a look at this one more time. There's your linebacker, and he drops back here, you know, due to the do the route that the over route that breaks here but he's waiting for this dig route right about here is where you'd like to see purdy begin this throw ideally this is the spot he'd be away from he can get this ball a little bit further away from this um linebacker he's getting the ball out earlier for the defender um so he doesn't have to wait and risk dealing with pressure but he waits maybe another beat longer. It's good placement anyway. But it's just one of those things that you'd like to see is that with Purdy, you'd like to see him maybe be a beat earlier with a lot of the reads that he's making. They're the right reads. This is the right read. It's a good, you know, it's a good read right here. He's, you know, noticing the leverage of the defender with his um, hips open to the inside here, but he's running downfield. And, he's, and he ends up picking up the inside man right here. So Purdy's waiting for confirmation of that. But if he had decided to make the throw, really right here, it would have been fine based on the leverage of the defender, the, the defender moving downfield. He could have gotten this without an issue. The defender, by the time he flips his hips and starts to run inside, the receiver's going to have this catch. But he waits for all of this to clear a little bit more and gets extra confirmation. And the placement's where it needs to be. I like Purdy's willingness to throw into tight windows. You're going to see him here in this particular play where 44 is going to blitz number 44, the linebacker in the middle of the field through the A gap. And you're going to see Purdy do a nice job here of hitting his tight end just as the defender arrives. Tight trail coverage places it really where it needs to be. I mean, like right in front gives the, the receiver a chance to be able to make the play on the ball, extend for it. Let's look at it over here. Here's the, the receiver in the slot. Pretty with a good job, short drop, gets rid of the ball, starts throwing it at the top of the stem early in the break. Good placement ahead of the trailing defender. Takes the hit. First down. One of my favorite things about Purdy's game is his pocket maneuvering. And this isn't a complete pass. This is kind of one of my favorite and least favorite things about his game. First is the front half of the play, the pocket maneuvering. The second part is that his vertical accuracy needs work. And, you know, anything after about 25, 30 yards it's a little iffy. But I love the fact that you get that little half-designed roll to the right, feels that pressure, does a great job of flashing the ball to the defender, ducking under, resetting, and he gets himself in a good position here to be able to throw this ball. Now the release and getting rid of this, a little too far to the inside, doesn't lead the receiver downfield the way he could. If he just put this ball up and to the outside and allow the defend the receiver to run under it and continue running instead of having to stop and make a contested play, this might be a touchdown. You know, but so he's going to have to work on the vertical game. But the thing that I like, again, is 
He can flush, spin, climb, sidestep defenders. He'll use pump fakes. He resets quickly. Maybe he rushes it a little too much. You can see he's a bit off balance as he does that. You just want to see him do a better job of you know, getting his feet set in these situations after he climbs so he doesn't rush it and that the ball he throws is a, a decent spiral and, and one that's well placed. But when you look at his feet here, you know, he avoids pressure. You know, the toe, where he's got the front toe pointed, looks like it's a little bit too far to the inside here. He'd rather just give him all that space to the outside flat to lead that receiver. Here's another example of this pocket play in action here. And again, pretty refined. One of the better pocket passers in terms of maneuvering that I've seen in this draft class thus far. There's the edge pressure, 97, blind side. He feels it. Does a great job within one step of the defender's reach. And a lot of this may be that he's hearing, you know, the communication from his line saying, you know, that this is coming. But he senses that well, picks that up. Nice spin outside. Resets. Gives a, a pump fake right there. He just can't really... He's not in position to be able to throw this ball, you know, with balance. If he were, he probably would have hit this receiver. But he can't do that. He gets further outside, breaks a tackle, resets, and then realizes he just has to get rid of the ball because he's in trouble. But that blind side action right here. To basically know this is going to get here within a step and to be able to make that turn within a step of the defender, make a miss, really well done. And I like that he's willing to throw the ball away. This is something that I've seen with him repeatedly, is that when he's under pressure, he'll try to exhaust his options. But once he realizes that, you know, that escape is futile, he'll throw the ball away. Here's another nice example of Purdy picking up a corner blitz in the red zone here. Motions across. And he sees the defender coming as he, you know, takes the exchange. Nice little job with the ball. And then planting and turning the shoulder, reducing the shoulder from the reach of the defender, pulls free, flushes to his left, his right, and then he's going to see his tight end work his way open. And then he has this nice little off platform fadeaway throw, at least in theory, but in practice it's too high. But it's only it's placed only where the receiver is going to have a shot at the ball. Let's look, take a look at it from the end zone view here. You're going to see them, you know, anticipating this corner blitz with him shifting everybody inside. Then he shifts that receiver across. Feels the pressure. Nice reduction of the shoulder. Right here. You can tell he's trying to throw this in bounds. The guy's worked open. He's just unable to get it there. It's a little too high sails on him. And too far to the, to the boundary. Part of the reason why is he needs to slow down. He, you know, once he get, he gets away from the pressure very well, but being able to like slow his feet down, slow his process here, and get his feet into a position where he can actually make the throw, that's where things get a little out of whack for him. This is a difficult throw as it is, but nonetheless, he did have enough space to probably. You, you know, get himself set up and throw this in a little better rhythm than what he did. I want to see Purdy drive the ball a little bit more, especially when he has an opportunity to do so. This is an opposite hash throw he's going to throw to his tight end, Kolar. I believe it's his tight end, Kolar, to the right side here. And he gets that ball off on time, but it's a little bit too far inside. Now the receiver still makes the catch because it gets just over the head of the defender, but the defender had the leverage to cut this off based on the placement of the pass. You can see the 44 undercuts this and nearly gets it. Could have been led a little bit more. Let's take a look at it from the red zone view because you're going to see Purdy's feet here on this. And when he drops back, it's like a quick two or three step drop here. And his feet don't just... They, they, it doesn't look like he's generating much with his legs when he throws this ball. There's just not a lot going on with the torsion of his hips. 
you know, he just kind of, the ball's kind of lofted up there. And you can see it's to the back shoulder of the receiver instead of the front shoulder. So again, if he can drive this ball a little bit more, he might have a little, he might have more success with these types of plays because this should have been intercepted. I mean, that's how close it was. The defender had the leverage based on the fact that this throw was behind the receiver. If he could get this ball out in front and ahead, and part of that is having a little more velocity on the ball, and that comes down to the feet. What's he doing with the feet here? You know, it seems like the ball's coming out just as he sets his feet. He's not really driving through with his legs as well as you, as you, could, you would hope to get there. And he's just fortunate that it's a completed pass. Here we see it again. I love the ability to avoid pressure. You know, he feels that push up the middle after he climbs away from the edge pressure, avoids the interior pressure as he slides outside. He has a wide open man here, though, in this flat. And he just rushes it. And this ball still has to, requires an acrobatic effort for the receiver to make this catch. It's a good enough throw. But he just rushes his process. He's got an extra step. He's got time. He just needs to slow down a step or two or just slow the final two steps down. So when he gets rid of this ball, he's not airmailing it. Let's take a look at it from the other angle here. And again, good feel of the pocket. Good feel when to get out of it. Finds the open man. Just a little too high. I really like this play from Brock Purdy because it gives you a chance to see how he looks through progressions, his patience, his placement, and some manipulation that goes on here. Let's take a look at it one more time here. You're going to see that the, the receiver making the catch is the tight end. He's on the right side here. You're going to see the receiver who worked to the backfield work outside here. Both those receivers, that's going to kind of stretch out the defense a little bit. They're going to slide out to the flat. And then you're going to see Kolar, the tight end, work to the middle. But you can see there's four zone defenders in the middle of the field here. And what Purdy does a nice job of is looking to the crossing route. That brings the front linebacker, the shallow linebacker, up front and climbing a little bit and spreads out this square of zone defenders. And it squares, spares, um, spreads it out enough along with the safety here sliding out to the flat that allows Kolar to get in between here and find an open area. And because of the fact that Purdy looked to that crossing route up front, that helped open that. He can come back and fire that ball over and just a little behind the linebacker for Kolar to make at least an attempt to catch the ball. He catches the ball, drops it after the contact. But this is a nice throw. It's well positioned. He manipulates the target well. You know, he goes through, you know, looking to at least one defend one player, second player here, third option right here. Even if this is the one he ultimately wants to go to, that's good manipulation. If it's not who he wanted to go to, then it's good reading of the progressions. Either way, this is nice work to set up a player for success by Brock Purdy. Here's another example of Purdy rolling out to his right. He sees where he wants to go very well. Number eight. And he wants to throw that against the grain back. And he even slows his feet down a little bit here on this particular play. But he just can't get himself in a position where he can get this ball, you know, thrown accurately. And ends up sailing it here. So, you know, this is just a common thing with this game, I notice, is that when he avoids pressure and he's on the move and he has to recompose his feet, he just doesn't get the rhythm of it, the placement, the accuracy where it needs to be so that he can really get great placement with the football on these types of plays. And if he did, it could elevate his game in a lot of ways because he's so good at getting out of the pocket and so resourceful. And if he can figure this part out, He's going to have some value. Again, looking at his pocket skills, love it. I love what he can do here. This is just a short scramble. I mean, he doesn't find anybody open, looks from one side of the field to the next, gets a couple yards and gets tripped up. But what I love about this play 
is after he looks to his left, comes back to his, or looks to his right, comes back to his left, feels the pressure, sidesteps it, both hands on the ball, knows that zero's coming, number the linebacker number zero, and look at the pump fake, right in that direction. That freezes the the linebacker just enough that he can get outside and get some positive yards on the play. He does this all the time. You can see why Purdy has confidence in layering throws and why he tries to do it so much when he works to the outside or outside the pocket. Because in the pocket, in the middle of the field, look at this throw that he hits to Kolar here up the seam. You've got a linebacker coming off the, the middle receiver. You've got a safety over top, and he just floats it right in between. 21 yards downfield, that's a perfect throw. And so when you see a quarterback being able to do things like this, you can understand why he wants to push that envelope a little bit to the outside. I mean, here it is right there, right over, right in between. And when he does this, I mean, let's take a look at his feet here. You know, off a quick one-step drop. Feet aren't perfect in terms of, you know, maybe how you you know where you want them to be but i mean the back the back foot is aligned with the target he is pointing that you know feet aren't bad just seems to be a little off balance as he throws you know as he lets that ball go but you can't get any better than the placement one of the things that i don't really love about purdy's game is that he can get too fixated on trying to make a play when it's really unnecessary. They're up 27-7 in this game in the fourth quarter. And here's pressure coming. He decides to make this throw, and he leads the receiver into contact. Now, if, it, you know, if you're down 27-7 and you're trying to come back, you got to make some tough plays. I get it. But you're up by 20 points. Why? Why are you going to throw this ball? Why are you going to lead him? into a zone like this throw the ball out of bounds it's first and 10 you're at midfield i mean yeah it's a good throw from the standpoint that it's catchable but look what you're leading them into you don't need to do that you know be a better teammate from that standpoint and manage the game you know it's not intentionally trying to hurt anybody obviously but the the upside here is minimal you know here's an open man in the flat why are you going for the more dangerous throw? Throw the ball out of bounds. Check it down. See if you can get rid of it there. Now, I can see where maybe he misses 11 here. But he should see that 11's releasing with this man deep. And this guy's he got his back to him. This is the throw. Loft that ball up. And he probably has it. But instead, you're going for the dangerous one on the back side. Fortunately, the defender here knows the defender knows that if he delivers a hard hit here, it's going to be dangerous. But he delivers enough of a hit to knock it loose anyhow. This is a nice example of a big play by Purdy against pressure. You're going to see him here with the initial drop. There's going to be edge pressure that comes through here by the linebacker. The linebacker basically, it looks like a green dog blitz. Let's see if it is kind of sees where the back is pressure comes up the field right here Purdy does a good job of showing the ball flashing the ball like he's going to throw and then turning inside the defender resetting and now here's his receiver wide open up the boundary on the right side getting behind the defense nice couple of hitches throws that ball about 50 yards in the air pinpoint big play so what I like here is the ability, again, he manipulates pressure extremely well from the pocket or an open space. He does a good job of doing it by showing the ball. And he knows where he wants to go. He keeps his eyes downfield through that. Resets pretty well on this particular play. And it's a perfect throw. Here's another nice play by Purdy because... So he's looking to his left. He has three receivers to his left, but pressure gets through basically one of the inside gaps here. So he's dealing with interior pressure that comes through, you know, quickly. And he does a nice job of being able to reduce the shoulder, step away, 
And then what happens here is what's difficult. He runs into his own man. Usually when a quarterback runs into his own blocker in the pocket, he's toast. Usually the backside pressure is going to get him or a defender in the area. Well, the backside pressure is just getting up. The defender in the area is just getting up. Purdy does a good job of showing composure to get past that, finding the open man right here and getting the ball out. I think Brock Purdy knows himself pretty well because when you see this play, you're going to see a you know two receivers set to the left side and there's a half roll designed to the left. And when you look at the leverage of this receiver, he's ahead of the defender. He's going to break to the outside. There's nobody over top. And he just turns away from it. He looks to the deep route. And then he feels the pressure. And then he decides to try and avoid the pressure and get sacked. Now here's the thing. When you watch this receiver make his break that I mentioned, the first outside man right here, if he stops here and delivers his throw the receiver's going to be open. Look at this. The defender's still running downhill. And the fact that the defender's back is turned right here is enough for Purdy to know that the defender's not going to be able to cut off this pass with, the, with a good break. So he could throw this, but it's an opposite field throw. And he knows that he doesn't have the velocity to throw this ball opposite field and hit his receiver on time, and that might give the defender a chance to recover and cut off this pass. So he's not confident in his arm strength to be able to hit this type of a throw. And this is a throw that is a 5, 10, 15, 20 yard out, that intermediate out from the, at least the pitch point that requires that velocity that he just doesn't have. One of the best things that Purdy does with his ability to manage pressure is just he has good feet, he anticipates pressure, and he can build in movement within his drop. You can see here, I mean, this is a dropped um, crossing route. But still, look what happens. This is a three-step drop normally. Watch here. One, two, three. But he feels the pressure off the edge from 96 off the left side. Watch him build in two more steps so that he can slide to his right. Four, five, right there. A little slide and hitch just enough away from that defender so that he has a clean lane to throw. And it's just drop. But good work by Purdy. The fact that he can build in adjustments to his drop game based on pressure, that's notable and a valuable thing to have. Here's another example where Purdy just doesn't go for the throw because he just knows he doesn't have the arm to do it. He's at the right hash. And you can see him drop back. He's looking towards his left and the middle of the field. In the middle of the field, Charlie Kolar is doubled. That this is this is not open at all. He has a middle trips man who's running basically a whip route. And that seems to be something that he's looking at maybe, but I don't think he's looking at that. I'm gonna tell you what I think he's looking at as he takes his sack. I think he's looking at this outside. You've got a defender with inside shade here, singled up against your outside man. There's nobody near there. The far, the one safety who's highest up on the field is at the far right hash. This is the free meal right here to the left side. But the problem is, is he doesn't have the utensils. You know, he doesn't have the utensils to eat on this because he doesn't have the arm. He can't throw this ball and lead his receiver downfield. Even though his receiver right here is open, he doesn't have the confidence to throw it with enough velocity to keep this from being a jump ball. And he's not confident. He should be letting this go. Even leaving. That receiver's even. He's now leaving. And Purdy just, he just can't pull the trigger. And just as he might think he should... Well, he's being wrapped right here. And let's take a look at it from the red zone view because you're going to see it again here as he t begins his drop back. You know, you can say he's looking to the middle right here and he knows that's doubled. And, he, and you see him pivot. He turns out to that outside. And he's thinking about it, but he should be getting this throw. Should be beginning this throw. Not even close because he's wistfully thinking, I wish I had that kind of arm. I mean... That's just how it goes. Or just wondering if he should even try it. And 
that's the limitation with his game is that he's not going to take throws that he should. It should have been one of the first reads that he looked at. It should have been the thing that he said, wow, I've got a one-on-one on the opposite side of the field. This is what I should be looking at. I'll look to the middle to give the little bit to that safety here, maybe reinforce what's going on. But really, I should be setting, hitching, and firing this ball. And you've got the lane to do it. Doesn't happen. Now let me qualify something about Brock Purdy's arm. He has enough arm to throw the ball 57 yards to the opposite side of the field. Look at this play. This is a 57-yard pass. Now, it overthrows the receiver by five yards. It does draw a defensive penalty right here. But what you want to see is more velocity on the ball. So you can have the trajectory be a little lower. Because he's throwing this ball, you know, kind of leaning back with his leg here, throwing it high, getting a lot of air under that ball. Nice arc, but again, it's wide. And maybe if the receiver doesn't get um, fouled here, right here maybe the receiver is able to catch up to it I don't think he will I don't think the placement was good enough here but you can see that he has enough arm to work with to be able to make vertical throws in certain types of passing games certain types of routes where he can put air under the ball where he can run off play action and I like that he was willing to attack because he he didn't attack two throws two targets that he had on the opposite side of the field earlier in this game. So this is a little more heartening to see. Here's a throw that I wonder about with Purdy because you're going to see him face the outside receiver after they motion Brees Hall to the outside. Now it's the receiver in the, in the flat here on the right side. And he's going to run the skinny post. And Purdy knows right here, based on the read, that he's got the outside defender who's going to be working against the skinny post and coming over from there and the inside sw defender switching over to the running back. That gives Purdy the sig signal right there, the indication that he can hit the open receiver on the skinny post. So he gets the ball out on time. I mean, the ball's coming back at this point the minute he reads that. I like that. Good anticipation. But as you notice, the placement is to the back shoulder and it gives the defender who's coming over to cover an opportunity to defend the pass a little bit better than what needed to happen. Um, this could have been led front shoulder and would have been better off. Now, here's the question. Is Purdy late with the throw? I don't think so, because let's watch it one more time. One, two, one step drop. I mean, it's a one step drop and he's already bringing the ball back. So the fact that it's a one step drop is a good thing. Now you might say, well, the ball's kind of far behind his his uh, helmet here. Is he, you know, does he have a, an elongated release? Usually not, but this one's a little bit longer because he wants to put some zip on the ball. Ball comes out fast. I mean, he flicks it well. He's on time with getting the ball out. But the I don't think the ball gets there on time. Now, does he have to get the ball over a defender? Yeah, I think he has to layer this ball in over the dropping linebacker right here. But he does that just fine. And he could have led him downfield a little bit more. So is it the placement that he just doesn't lead the receiver downfield enough because of where he placed it? Or is it that the throw lacks the velocity it needs to get there fast enough for the receiver to make the catch, say, right here in front of him. Like, the ball needs to be, you know, where the receiver is making the catch right here, maybe the ball needs to be out in front. Or the ball is arriving right here earlier. Well, let's see, where would it be arriving? Basically, if he has more zip on it, you would expect the ball maybe to be right here you know so i think it's a combination of placement and velocity being lacking and if he can get a little bit better with that you know this could have been a touchdown and and really it's a you know he can't get much earlier he could maybe get a split second earlier maybe so the zip's got to be a little bit better 
When Purdy can throw from a balanced position while he's moving, he can layer throws. And he can layer throws downfield. It's impressive. He doesn't have the strongest arm, but again, his placement can be excellent when he has his feet under him and he's in a good position. Watch this. I mean, he has to roll to his right, and he's looking deep, sees that that's going to be reasonably well covered, and he's probably not going to be able to hit that with his arm. I mean, he can throw 50 yards in the air, but still, he's already 30 yards away here and rolling. He's looking at the middle receiver on the over route here who's behind the zone of five defenders here, okay? And he rolls to the right, throws under with his feet under him. It's a little bit of a jump throw, but he has his feet under him. It's not so awkward, and he gets his ball over the defense, on time to the receiver, leads him in stride, only where he's going to be able to make the catch, 28 yards. Let's take a look at it from the red zone view. And you can see he's in a little bit more control. He's also not trying to throw against the grain, which is something that he has a tendency to do. He's actually patient enough with this particular play, and the, the pressure demands it because there's only one defender right here, 19, who's really pressuring him. And he gets his ball off early, leads the man with good anticipation in stride. Beautiful layered throw. One of the things about I, that I like about Purdy in this game is that he brought Iowa State back to make this a really tight ball game. I wish, though, that he made this throw earlier. It's an inaccurate throw just shy of the mark with the receiver on this over route. But when you take a look right here, okay, and really right here, he sets his back foot after he slides a little bit to his left. I'd like him to see the receiver breaking right here. If he can fit this ball and lead his receiver so that the ball's out and arriving where I'm, I'm circling, this could be a touchdown. But instead, he waits, slides over to his right, and tries to get the open lane, and it's a tougher throw. Let's take a look at it from the other viewpoint and see if we get a little bit of a clue as to whether what I'd like to see makes sense from what Purdy can see. Here's 43. That's the man. So I see him tracking it. He's tracking it right here. He's tracking it right here. But I guess he feels like he lost a little bit of that right there. But I think that if he had just stayed patient and threw this ball, he had the lane. But he decides to avoid this pressure and then step outside. I think that if he had just let this ball go right here, and instead of leaning and running... He had just planted and thrown. This is open. He would have gotten it past the umpire. And I think this is a score. I like what I've seen from Purdy. Accounting for, you know, continued development areas where he can realistically improve, as well as the potential for NFL playing time. I think Purdy's college film grades out well as someone who could deliver starter execution at some point probably in a limited role and what I mean by that is that he's maybe not a fit for a wide range of offenses as prospects with greater physical tools than Purdy but he has skills in the pocket he has command as a thrower and a decision maker and I think that as long as he can be on a team that gives him exposures to offensive and defensive concepts can help him practically apply the lessons that he's going to have to learn he could have some success, and I think he could have su success in a scheme that's tailored heavily to his strengths while minimizing his weaknesses, which is often the case with players of Purdy's um, skill level. It just means that the success of his game may require the team to rely heavily on the strength of his supporting cast, um, or there might be some diminishing returns. But I love his ability to transcend the limitations of the defense with his pocket play, with his ability to make some layered throws, um, to be able to throw on the move. There's some potential there that I think could be really strong. If he can just get a little bit better with his arm strength, if he can throw with more velocity on some of these key vertical plays, he could maybe transcend this projection and become a, a productive starter in the NFL. It may take some time. The odds are a little bit lower based on the way the NFL is, but he's an intriguing player. Think about Gardner Minshew. Think about Maybe Davis Mills a little bit is the upper end of that. Um, Sam Ellinger, players like that. 
Thanks again for watching. For more RSP Boiler Room videos, you can check out my YouTube channel, Matt Waldman's RSP Film Room, and my site, www.mattwaldmanrsp.com.